Welcome to Module 6, Lesson 19, Understanding Three-Dimensional Figures. Okay, so, um, you know, looking ahead in, in high school geometry, you guys will be um, studying the link between the volume of a figure and its slices, okay? And in doing so, you're going to consider the whole figure in slices versus any given slice, as we've studied here in um, in grade 7, which we're doing this year, okay? Now, in this lesson here, 19, we are going to take uh, what hopefully is an easy approach to thinking um, of a figure in slices. Um, and the way we're going to make it easy is we're going to think of this in terms of um, each slice being made up of several cubes, okay? So different different levels are going to be made up of um, of cubes, okay? And I'll show that to you, of course, get right into it and, and, and uh, quickly. You know, one thing or a couple of things that you could have at your ready, which would be, um, which would be super. Um, again, if we're in the class, this is what I would have for you, but um, let me show you some things that will really, really come in handy here. Okay, so if you could have, and I just went on to the, um, <clears throat> to the internet and just searched for centimeter squared grid paper. And uh, came up with this and uh, found a piece of centimeter squared grid paper. And I had a bunch of these centimeter um, centimeter cubes, okay, that come with, pretty much come with any um, math manipulatives packet you may get. Um, <clears throat> and you can find them real easily. They're here at the annex um, if you need to, need to pick some up here at school. Um, but anyway, if you had these, it'd be great because this way you can actually um, work along with me. As we um, as we build these different levels of slices, okay. Um, so in example one, we're going to have you um, <clears throat> you are going to be asked to imagine each three dimensional figure as a figure built on a tabletop, okay. So each horizontal slice of the figure is to be mapped onto grid paper where, as you can see right here, where each one by one cell represents the base unit of a unit cube. Okay, so that's, so each one of these here, each one by one cell here is going to be the base unit of a cube. Okay, um, when we mentioned level N means slicing the plane in N units Above the tabletop, okay. So once I sit one of these units into its place, and here let me just show you a picture of that. Okay, so here, um, <clears throat> so each so level n here is going to be, you know, how many um, n units above the tabletop? Okay, so this is one. You can see one unit above the tabletop. Okay, um, so this means that level zero is just the tabletop, okay? Well, level one is one unit above the tabletop. So this would be level one there. Okay, this is right here is level zero. Okay, and then you continue. And as I build, and we will build, um, continue to build upwards, okay, we'll continue to have uh, more and more, more and more levels, okay? Um, so a slice is the intersection of the solid with the slicing plane, okay? So if I would slice right here, of course, or I slice right there, okay? So it is the intersection. So right there, it's the actual, this plane right here, okay? That is going to be our, our slice, okay? With this level one, for example, okay? So this means that at level zero and the slice at level one will always be the same. This is also why there is a slice at level 3, even though it is the top of the figure, let's say. Let's say it's the top of the figure. A horizontal plane at that level would still intersect with the figure, okay? So the very top level still has an intersection. So, for example, right here, you're slicing it right at the top, but that still is an intersecting place. And again, hopefully this will, will still get clearer and clearer as we... Um, as we go on. So, uh, in example one that we're coming up to, you have a reference point that is marked in your binder, okay, for every picture, okay? Um, 
and that reference point, um, and they are all exactly on top or below each other, okay, regardless which slice the map is for. So in example one, the reference point is marked, uh, marked for you guys, as you can see it there, and you can see it looks oblong because it's, you know, supposed to be represented um, three-dimensionally, so if you looked at it from the top, it would be um, a round dot, okay, um, so, um, yeah, so you'll just take a look, and that, that'll help you out along the way, so let's go ahead and get into this and um, see where, where this takes us, okay, so here's example one, okay, so example one, again, they want you to imagine this now, and again, I will, I will show you three-dimensionally here, um, on using my grid paper along the way, and hopefully you will be doing the same. Uh, but right now, just imagine, so if slices parallel to the tabletop, okay, with a height, a whole number of units from the tabletop, were taken of this figure, then what would each slice look like? What would each slice look like, okay? And you can see where you can take slices. Just to give you an idea, you can slice right here at level 1, okay? You can slice here at level 2, okay? So what would each slice look like? And again, that's going to be a flat, two-dimensional shape you're going to, going to be representing. So go ahead and think about that and figure that out and um, come on back. Okay, so let's um, let's take a look at this now. So again, if slice is parallel to the tabletop, okay. So here's the tabletop right here because that's your your whole reference point as your as your tabletop. And again, we are slicing parallel to the tabletop, so we're slicing this way. Okay. All right. So um, if we go ahead and look at that, I just went ahead and built that um, that three dimensional sh figure there. Um, on my tabletop on the grid paper, okay? So that's what it would look like. Now, at level one, okay, here is what my slice would look like, okay? It would look like that, and again, I'm looking from the top because I'm cutting a parallel, okay? I'm slicing parallel, therefore, to look and see what my slice looks like, I need to, to view it from the top, and that's what it looks like um, right there. And then when I put my level 2 on top there, my level 2 slice is actually going to look like that, okay? Because I'm only slicing right up here because I've sliced already, sliced level 1, made that slice, and that was, that was this one, okay? So here's my level 1 slice, looks like that, okay? And um, my level, then my level 2 slice is going to look like that. Okay, all right, and then if I drew these up, they would look like that. Okay, I have level one, there's my reference point. Okay, and there is what level one looks like. I can draw those lines in there too. And then my <clears throat> level two, again, paying attention to where the reference point is right there because level two has to match up this way. Okay, because that's where it is actually placed on the shape. Now, there is level three and above, uh, there's nothing. Okay, there are no, there is no level three or above, just up to level two, okay? So now let's go ahead and look at that um, second one, that example two there, and uh, it's a different shape. Interesting shape, maybe a little bit confusing, but let's see what you can go ahead and do with it. So if slices parallel to the tabletop were taken of this figure, then what would each slice look like, okay? And again, I think maybe if you want to go ahead and get your grid paper out, um, that might be uh, maybe real helpful if you made one of the one centimeter, um, the centimeter square grid paper. That's great, or the grid paper that I gave you at the beginning of the year um, would help you out um, quite a bit when you are um, creating your your slices. Okay, so again, if slice is parallel to the tabletop, again moving this way, slice, 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 and you can see this time we have three levels. Okay, just to give you a little hint there. Okay, um, what would they look like? So go ahead and give that a give that a try. Okay, so if we take a look at um, this, so here I've taken a photo of my um, <clears throat> my three dimensional building that I made. 
um, that uh, replicates this one here that's on the page here, the two-dimensional representation of the three-dimensional shape. Anywho, um, there it is, and it might be a little bit confusing, but you should just, when you're using these, just to notice that there is no there's no cube there, okay? There's no cube behind this one, okay? Just that might have confused you or might have seemed like it was um, maybe a little difficult to understand. And then again, also noticing, just now take the time to actually uh, make this point, but notice those reference points, okay? Because they are right there. It's right there. You can see it's like one block over from or one grid um, section over from the actual building's edge there, okay? Um, really important because when we draw our pictures. So um, our first perspective or our first slice, a level one, okay, and again, we notice we do have level, we have levels one, okay, two, and then we have level three in this case, okay, up to level three, all right, let's take a look. So level one, if I'm looking at it from above, Okay, because I'm looking at, because I'm talking about parallel slices, just make make sure I have my reference point there. There's my reference point, okay? That is what my um, my first slice looks like. My level one slice looks like that, okay? There it is, all right? A level one slice. Now looking at level two, okay, my level two slice. And again, just always putting that reference point in there. Reference point, right, well, it's over there somewhere, you know. And uh, this is what it is right there. And again, it does not include level one, okay? So it is just on its own there. It's separate. There's my level two. And again, I should probably write this down here. Level one. Level one slice. Level two slice. All right. And then finally, we have our level three slice. And there's our level three. And that is going to be just that simple one one square right there, and again, paying attention to um, where my um, reference point is right, right there. Okay, all right, so there they go, there are my pieces, okay, there are my slices, okay, level four and higher, of course, is nothing, there is no slice to be made, there is no level four, okay, it's only up to level three. So now, based on the level slices, you determined in example two how many unit cubes are in the figure. Okay, so if we go back and take a look at it here, and we had this one, we had level one here, level two, level three. Okay, if you're looking at those, how many unit cubes are in this figure, therefore? Okay, again, this is what we're getting to. We're getting to this relationship between slices and volume, okay, which is going to be pursued in much more earnest fashion in high school. Um, but for now, we're just trying to create um, something you can attach to that once you get there. So, yeah, how many unit cubes are in that figure? Okay, and if you said eight, you would have been correct, okay, because you see level one, we have five slices. We've got a slice of five, uh, five squares, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Level two, yielded us two, and then level three yielded us one square, okay? And because these squares represent the tops or the slices of this figure, um, each one of those represents, also represents a cube in this sense, okay? Therefore, um, how many unit cubes in this figure? It would have been eight units, unit, units cubed. Okay, and sticking with our parallel slices here, so um, exercise two, if slices parallel to the tabletop were taken of this figure, then what would each slice look like? Okay, a little bit more um, entailed because there are several levels. And again, just as way of a, of a hint of sorts here, you remember now we have, we have level one, we have level two, okay? We have level three, and then we have level four, okay? So now we're looking at four different levels, all right? So again, you're gonna draw, uh, draw uh, two-dimensional um, depictions of this three-dimensional figure um, in, the, you know, as, um, in terms of levels, okay, like we've been doing. And again, I think using uh, some grid paper of some sort would be um, extremely helpful. 
Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, three-dimensionally using my my cubes. Okay, and there there we have it. I made this building. It was not very easy. As you can see, it's a little bit crooked here and there. Um, I have uh, kind of my shaky coffee hands going. Maybe you guys are a little bit better at building these than I am, but uh, trying to get them straight is um, quite the task for me. But anyway, there is my three-dimensional representation, truly three-dimensional, although you are only seeing it two-dimensionally. Anyway, let's keep going. Okay, so level one. Again, remember we are just, we are making slices here, slicing very conveniently at these cube levels, okay? And level one looks like this, okay? Here's level one. I'll just put L1, and again, just paying attention again to that reference point, which is right there, or right there. I've got my shadows kind of hampering things, but again, as you can see, here is what it looks like, and it is how many different squared units? It's, what do we got there? We have uh, 12 units there, 12 squares. Okay, so that's level one right there. Level two looks like this. And now we have how many are there? Make our, our grid around them. We have seven squares there, seven units. That's level two. Again, paying attention to our reference point, which is right there. Level three. Okay, take a look at this. You know a question is coming at the end of all this, of course. And that is six squares there that make up level <clears throat> the level three slice and again these are all slices level two was there level three was there and then we have our final level level four which looks like this and that is three squares there and that's level level four and that was right there and as you can see and that's an easy one to see because you can actually see the top of this this building okay so there we go there we have it we have our level one two three and four those are all um, those, those four different slices taken of this three-dimensional figure and of course the question we knew was coming here is um, this given the level slices in the figure how many unit cubes are in the figure okay so if we go ahead and go ahead and take a look at it here we go let's look at our levels there was our level one, and we said we had how many? We had 12 here. Okay, 12. And for level two, we had seven. Level three, we had six. And then level four, we had three. And if we added those up, what do we end up with? 10, 28. So we should have, or that's the answer there, the root total number of cubes in the solid is 28. So it's 28 cubes that make up this um, three-dimensional building here. Okay, and if we were to put that in terms of, um, um, of units here, we would say 28 um, cubic units. And again, we're talking units, but the truth is we know these are centimeters, so truly this would be centimeters cubed, okay? So, and again, we'll get to this later. I'm not sure they're stressing that this lesson. So, um, yeah, so it took us 28 cubes to build this figure. Okay, now to approach this just from a different, different angle here. So, given the slices in the figure, they're given to you right here, how many unit cubes are in this figure? Okay, and there you have level one level 2, level 3, and level 4, okay, um, and again, the way this looks right here, the way this is laid out, um, this is more or less the way um, it, it, I'd like to see you actually doing this or, or writing this up in your book, and again, using your grid paper is a super idea, um, so we can uh, have some uniformity to this, and we can check, you could check your answers, and this is probably what they'll be expecting when you do your problem sets, and and on to your assessment at the end. So anyway, yeah, so how many unit cubes are in this figure? Go ahead and uh, figure that out. Okay, so all we have to do, of course, as we know, each slice, okay, reveals the top of a, um, of a level of cubes, okay? Therefore, if we counted these up here, uh, level one 
we add uh, all those up together and we have 18 cubes here. Um, and that 18 cubes, they would sit between level zero, which is actually the tabletop or the paper itself, and the top of level one, okay, 18. At level two, okay, um, between level one and level two, there are, I've counted these up, these are 13 cubes here. Um, level three, um, we have, um, what do we have? We have nine cubes nine cubes between level two and level three. Okay, but that's that level three slice that we've, we've taken. And then level four, as you can see right here, is um, our five. There are five cubes there um, between level four. Um, <clears throat> oh, well, level four. That's it. Level four is our last level on this one here. So if we add all those up, we get a total number of 45 cubes. So it took 45 cubes to construct this figure right here for which we only have slices revealed to us okay and again you can imagine now what's going to happen in subsequent um, lessons as we put these together um, having to construct figures from um, slices only and again the way this is easy again this is a connection now to to high school or, or, or geometry that sits down the road for you guys um, is now we are doing it, we are making this easy because we have cubes, very nice and uniform cubes um, in the future. They won't be as uniform, but just to get an idea of what we are talking about when we talk about this relationship between the slices of a three-dimensional figure and the volume, okay? All right, so, um, well, it's an optional exercise here. Sketch your own three-dimensional figure made from cubes and the slices of your figure. Okay, and then explain how the slices relate to the figure. Now, again, this is something that would be wonderful to do in class, and we could all do this together and we could discuss them. Um, we don't have that luxury right now, um, so you can um, maybe do this with your mom or dad or sister, brother, friend, um, if you'd like to get some practice and um, do that. If not, let's just go ahead and close this, close this lesson here with our lesson summary. All right, so um, we can um, we can take a, a, a different perspective of three-dimensional figures um, when we build them with unit cubes, okay? And we can take a look at their horizontal whole unit slices. Um, and the slices allow us a way to count the number of units, unit cubes in the figure, okay? Which is very, very useful when the figure is layered in a way so that many cubes are hidden from view, and which is the... The whole idea behind uh, all of these here is that you had some uh, some layers that were cubes that were hidden from view, but you knew what the layers looked like. Um, so we can examine the horizontal whole unit scales look uh, scales to look at three dimensional figures. These slices allow a way to count the number of unit cubes in the figure, which is useful when the figure is layered. Okay, when you have some some cubes hidden from view, um, in this way we can we can tell um, just by looking at the slices themselves. Okay, so again, this was a connection here, making this connection between um, this idea of slices and why we are, why we have been slicing these three-dimensional figures, um, and this connection to uh, geometry um, in the future and um, its relationship to volume. Okay, so good luck on the on the problem set, um, and um, yeah, this will be the last unit. This is the last lesson in um, topic C, and we will begin. Uh, topic D next with um, lesson 20.